Hi there, I'm Vienno and this is my 10th video tutorial on D3. Uh, so we're starting to get familiar with the, the data binding aspects of D3. Uh, but up until this point we've done something like this. We've created a simple array and inserted some numbers into it. And, uh, and then we've created visualizations based on this simple data. Uh, but in real life, this uh, is, rare, is rarely the case that you uh, hard code your data into the uh, on on the HTML document. Uh, what you usually do is you fetch data externally or load uh, external files. And what that means is, uh, I've I've prepared two files here, which are stored in the same folder as you can see as our index.html document. That we're working on right here, and uh, it's uh, mydata.json and mydata.csv, and they actually contain contain the exact same data, which is the name and age of of uh, three different people. Now, if you're not familiar with these file formats, uh, I suggest you just Google around. It's it's quite easy. Uh, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Note. Uh, notation I think and uh, yeah in this case we have a simple array consisting of three objects with uh, two properties each the name and age uh, and uh, the CSV file also contains three rows uh, for each one for each person and we have a header row up here which contains the headers uh, the name of each uh, value so how do we how do we fetch this data uh, to our d3 visualization uh, well it's quite easy actually and you can do this in a couple of different ways but i'll show you my preferred preferred way of doing this so let's start with the uh, the json file the way we load that data first of all you you want to do this uh, on a local server or a remote server but uh, in most browsers, this won't work if you just um, if you're not running on some some kind of server. But with that said, uh, you simply use a, a built-in method in of D3. You type d3.json, and obviously this is can this is the name of the file format. So if you wanted to load the load the CSV file, you would do uh, d3.csv. But we're working with the JSON file right now, and the first argument of this function is the path to our uh, our data file. And in this case, since they're stored in the same um, folder, we just type the name of the uh, of the file, which is mydata.json. The second argument will be a function, and this is called a callback callback uh, function. And what this means is that all the code in here, code, blah, 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 will be loaded once our data is loaded. So every um, all code that depends on the data being available should be stored within this function right here. And uh, we're giving the data, we're storing the data in a variable, and that is... Um, yeah, that is this data, uh, the thing we're calling data uh, in here. That's that's our data. So we'll see how to how to reference that in a second. So let's start. Uh, I'm gonna type this kind of quick so we don't run out of time. Uh, from now on, it's kind of straightforward. We're doing the same thing we've been do we've been doing a couple of times by now. We, oops. First of all, we create our container or our canvas, and let's give it some. Ah, uh, blah, blah. I can't type and speak at the same time. Just give it a width and height, and then we proceed to add our bars. So rectangle and the data. As you can see, we're 
we're loading we're referencing the data variable that we define up here uh, as an argument to our callback function so we can call this whatever I call this data and then I just type name of the variable here so this is where we specify where our data is coming from and this in turn um, references the data stored in our file which we specify in our first um, argument here so the next thing is use the enter method and we want to append a rectangle for each data element and then we want to give it some uh, properties width and height we can let the height be 50 and the y position will also be a function and uh, let's give it a fill of say blue now let's fill these out uh, the width will be a function and just as before we can just um, use the D the D uh, argument here which will reference our data just as in in the previous videos so let's uh, let the width be a function of the age now since each data object or, or each uh, JavaScript object in our JSON file has two properties we actually need to define which of these properties we are referencing uh, with this D variable so the way we do that is real simple we just type D dot H um, so so that uh, references the age property of our data elements and let's multiply this by 10 so that uh, the bars get a little bigger and uh, in here the uh, y uh, property or attribute will be actually a function of the index and we've seen how this worked before we just return the index for each data element times 50 or whatever and let's save and take a look at this okay let's give them some space we can just reduce the height with two pixels and refresh and we have three nice uh, bars here each represents the age of each person in our uh, data our my data.json file uh, so let's also give give uh, add some some text to each bar the way we do that is nothing strange we just repeat the procedure um, append text this time and let's give it a fill let's say white let me scroll down here and um, since we want the text of each um, bar to be at the same position as the bar so you can see what text belongs to each bar we can actually just copy this uh, the attribute for the Y position or the vertical position for the text and then we also want to to specify what text uh, we want it to have so we let the text prop property be a function of our data and we return this time d.name since let's say we wanted the 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 name to be visible visible on each bar so let's uh, save this and refresh and we can see that we have our, have our names here but they're not in the exact position that we want them to be and that's because each name um, well it begins at the top of each bar so we actually want to move them down uh, to the middle and we know that each bar is 48 pixels uh, in height so we can just move them down uh, let's say 24 pixels 
so let's save this and refresh nope oh that was the weird that was the, the wrong property it's right here actually 24 save and refresh and we get some nice uh, labels attached to each bar so yeah I think I'll stop there um, but this is uh, this is the way we'll work with data in the future uh, loading it externally and uh, yeah and also this is really simple explaining this last part what if we wanted to use a file that contains values in I mean data in in this CSV format which stands for um, uh, comma separated values we, c we could actually just replace the JSON with the CSV like this and ref uh, save and refresh and you can see that we get the exact same results so it's actually really easy uh, working with external data in D3 yeah okay uh, I'll see you in the next video